Do you feel like you're wasting time trying to figure out what to study rather than actually studying? Well, I help aspiring professional engineers like you to become sure that you'll pass the PE exam on the first try. And this is the series where every day I give you one insight, one rule of thumb, one key distinction, or one fundamental idea so that little by little you can get clear on what matters and how to focus your valuable time and energy. In today's daily insight, we're going to talk about the sensible heating and cooling of liquid water. So we talked about some rules of thumb for heating and cooling of air, but how about the heating and cooling of water? Well, there's also a rule of thumb for that. And we say that the amount of heating or cooling done by water can be calculated as 500 times GPM times delta T. Now this comes in handy when analyzing chillers, cooling towers, boilers, or any hydronic systems that you may be interested in. This is predominantly going to be used in the United States because it speaks of gallons per minute. And if you're in parts of Europe or the rest of the world, then you're probably talking about liters per second or some other SI unit. So uh, this may not apply there. But ultimately, this is derived from the classic original equation, Q equals MC delta T. So baked into this 500 constant that we conveniently have out front is the specific heat capacity of water, which is one in US customary units. And instead of this being a mass, it's a volume. So that's why we get to have a volume flow rate here. And for it to be a rate, it has to be divided by time. So this is a rate of heat transfer, not a total amount of heat energy as it is with this. So if you had to start with this equation, you could certainly derive this, but for the sake of speed on the PE exam, these rules of thumb come in really handy because they'll get you within one or two percent of accuracy and you'll save a lot of time. So I would uh, recommend memorizing these rules of thumb and using them in, in practice problems. I wouldn't uh, <laughs> go for rote memorization, just apply them when the situation comes up and you'll end up wanting to use them more often than you want to go sort of back to these fundamental equations. So just to run through the units, the heat transfer should come out in BTUs per hour. So if you require tonnage, let's say for a cooling problem, you'll have to get BTU per hour first and then divide by 12,000. 500 is just a constant. And that's not going to vary very much because the density of water and the um, specific heat capacity of water are fairly non-reactive to changes in temperature. So this is a really good rule. The volume flow rate has to be in GPM. So we don't even bother to say volume flow rate. We say GPM just to make sure that's the case. And the delta T is in degrees Fahrenheit. So as long as you use the right units going in, you'll always get BTUs per hour coming out. And you can use this to analyze cooling towers, chillers, boilers, or any other hydronic systems you may be dealing with. And that's today's daily insight on sensible heating and cooling of liquid water. All right, guys, I hope this video was useful. When you're ready to start putting these ideas into practice, head over to mechanicalpeexamprep.com. There are tons of original practice problems with detailed video solutions that are easy to watch. And the course previews are free, so go check it out. And until next time, happy studying.